Rendering out your image with AOVs and separate render layers gives you more control when it comes to compositing, as you can make very specific refinements to individual lights, your depth of field, or your foreground and background elements. Let's start with AOVs. Renderman's built-in AOVs display mostly geometric information, whereas light path expressions can be used to specify what light paths to output to the channel, such as diffuse, specular, or specific lights like your key light and fill lights. If you watched my previous quick tip video, you already have the Z-Depth set up, but let's go over the process again for some other common AOVs. In Katana, AOVs are set up using pairs of PRMAN output channel define and render output define nodes. Each pair defines an AOV output. Let's use group stacks to keep these nodes nice and tidy by selecting each one and pressing Alt G. Group stacks let you create multiple of the same type of node and edit the parameters all from the top level. So it keeps your node graph nice and organized. So let's add a channel for the direct diffuse. We can name it, leave the type as color, and then add a source. To find out the value we need to add here, you can refer to Renderman's documentation, which has a great guide for the expressions to use for each AOV. So I'm just going to copy and paste from here. Let's add a couple more. I'll add one for the direct specular and for the emissive. And then I'll copy the expressions in here as well. The next step is to link these to an output channel, which is what our render output define stack is for. So we can add some more nodes here, one for each new AOV that we've created. And then we can name them and choose the relevant channel from the channel dropdown, which will be populated with the AOVs that we've created above. Let's make sure that the outputs are all selected in the render settings before setting off a render. And we can see all the AOVs in the monitor or the monitor layer. And these all seem to be working nicely. To set up AOVs for individual lights, the process is the exact same, except we'll first need to assign our lights a light group. This is done inside the light parameters. I'll use this red C light as an example. And under the material and advanced options, you can see a light group field where we can assign a light group to the light. I just call this the same as the light, so I'll call it C red as well. Multiple lights can be assigned to the same light group if needed, but for now, I'm just going to demonstrate with this one. So jumping back to our outputs, we can add a new one for this light. And in the source value, we can use an expression to target our light group. This is also shown on the random man docs. So I'll just copy from here and just make sure to change the light group name to what we named it, which was C red. And I'll also make sure to prefix this with color LPE colon. And then this is all set up properly. Now we can go to the render output define and do the same as before add a new output, name it, and then select C red from that drop down list. Setting off a render again, we should be able to see all our AOVs, including the red C light. And you can continue setting these up so you have all the AOVs that you need. To separate your scene into render layers, you can quite simply add new render nodes for each layer. So let's add one for the background, one for the foreground, and then one for the fog. And I'll just rename this existing render node. This can be for the whole scene. Each render layer stream can now have their own render settings and AOV setups if needed by adding nodes to make overrides in each of these streams. To determine what's rendered for each render layer, we can use PRMAN object statements nodes. This node can be used to set the visibility of objects 
or whether they're matted out amongst a range of other options. So for our background layer, we're gonna want the gas station, the spaceship and the fog to not be visible to the camera, but still contributing to indirect lighting and shadows. For the foreground, we want the opposite. The terrain, the towers and the fog should not be visible to the camera. And then finally, for the fog layer, we want to target all the geometry except for the fog. But this time, instead of turning the visibility off, we want to set it to matte. So we get that differing amount of fog depending on the depth, which is needed for comping it together with the other layers. And you can see, we can also use custom statements here to target the pieces of the scene that we need for each layer. So that covers how AOVs and render layers can be set up in Katana. Stay tuned to learn how to render all of this out to disk.